From on-site of 2023 training camp, we welcome you to the first episode of Special Edition for the 23 season. Alongside Nick Eatman and Haley Sutton, I'm Kyle Yeomans from the River Ridge Sports Complex on-site here in Oxnard, California, as the Dallas Cowboys have officially kicked off their campaign. And lots of excitement around this team after a great offseason, the additions of Brandon Cooks, of course, Stephon Gilmore on the defensive side of the ball, and then recently re-signing Trayvon Diggs to a five-year extension. Already some fireworks flying out here in Oxnard, but Nick, what are you most excited to see for this team as they get back on the field? Well, I think that there's a lot of talk about is this defense the best in the NFL? Well, let's find out. Let's see if they're better than the offense, and a lot of times at training camp that does happen where the defense is a little bit further along, especially when the offense is, is you know, have a new coordinator and a and, and new play caller, but I still want to see this defense. I want to see how they rally around Micah Parsons, all these other pass rushers, the corners should be stronger. You know, if this is going to be the best in the league, this is a good time to show it. Hey, Lee, what do you think? I mean, you talk about the defense, but that offense has got to do some things as well. Listen, I have no doubt that this defense is going to be fantastic. We learned that last year, not ever to doubt them, even when there were things that they needed to improve on. For me personally, I'm most looking forward to seeing Dak Prescott's redemption season. Uh, this is a guy who's one of the best in the NFL at what he does. He's a humble person. He's a great person, and he's got the talent around him. I think they've done a great job in the offseason of getting him back to that place where he can operate the way he operates, and I'm ready for him to quiet the haters, quite frankly, because he gets so much flack. And I'm not saying that Dak Prescott is perfect, uh, but he's a lot better than what he gets from this national narrative about him. So I'm really excited to see him out on the field uh, and getting back to leading that offense. Well, even he has acknowledged the the haters, as you said. I mean, it, it, overall, this is this is a Dak Prescott that understands the responsibilities at hand. And I think he's just where you are. He's ready to silence some of those critics along the way and take those interception numbers down and continue to, to push this offense forward. And Mike McCarthy's really excited about what could happen on the practice field behind us. They only have 12 practice days. Ten of those are padded. But he still says this is the best setup that he's had now entering year number four is the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Here's what he had to say. I mean, to give you a comparable, I, I think it's, it's it's definitely the best of the four years. Um, you know, I think that, you know, when you just building up what Jerry talked about with the draft and younger players and, and um, you know, you know, the development in, in how we're able to integrate our young players. You know, you know, we played, I don't know what statistics are, but I'm sure we're up there one or two in the league is playing young players the last particularly two to three years. So, uh, you know, so that that part is I feel really strong about because I've always felt that bridging the gap between the veteran players and the younger players is critical in, you know, in your opportunity that you're building towards winning a championship. So that brings the question to the table. Is this the best roster that Mike McCarthy has had in his tenure? as a part of the Dallas Cowboys. And I think a lot of people can argue that maybe that 21 team had some, some extra firepower with Amari Cooper in the fold. But I mean, Nick, when you look at this roster, they certainly have the, the pieces to fill it in. Yeah, they definitely do. And, and, and time will tell if, if this is the best roster and obviously without Ezekiel Elliott here and you wonder about the running back position and all that. But I think for the most part, the pieces that they've added that as we've discussed on offense and on defense and, and just how they're gonna complement other players around them. Yeah, I, I think so. And I think Dak is going to be better. I think the offensive line has a chance to be better. I think the receivers, corners, I mean, you, you have superstar players really all across the board. And I think that they're, you know, right here at, at the prime of their career to take that next step. So, yeah, I do think it's the best roster he's had. I think Mike McCarthy said it best in his opening press conference. He didn't really have to give this team a message in terms of being fired up and being ready to go for this season. They were already locked in. And I think, too, he even said it on stage that he was most excited for this year. He feels most ready for this year. So, uh, I would say so, especially in the Mike McCarthy era, when you think about, like Nick said, what they've done in the offseason and what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, this is a good team. There's a lot to look forward to, especially when you talk about that cornerback position. And when we come back, we've got a corner that just inked a new deal with Trayvon Diggs, like we mentioned a moment ago. We'll go deeper into that. And then also, Zach Martin, one of the better players on this roster, has not reported to camp as we speak. When we come back, what kind of impact could that have, that have on the 23 Dallas Cowboys? Special Edition, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Reliant, official energy provider of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, 
Make your crypto play today. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. Back here with more special edition on site here in Oxnard, California. Haley Sutton, Nick Eatman, and we just talked about Trayvon Diggs a little bit there. Just barely touched on it, but Haley, I'll start with you. Him signing a five-year, $97 million extension. I mean, this is big for, for the Cowboys, not only to ink him, to get him solidified, but also now to pair him with Stephon Gilmore. Yeah, I want to touch on first, though, the impact that this has on Trayvon Diggs because you could tell in his press conference yesterday how emotional he was, how much being with this organization meant to him and really earning the bag, so to speak, right? So from the player standpoint, you love when those guys can get elevated. But listen, this is exciting for Cowboys fans, uh, especially when you think about the history of the defense on this team. Now you have another player that fans can latch on to and really get excited about, and then you partner him with Stephon on Gilmore on the other side. Uh, I said this earlier in the week and inside training camp, I feel bad for receivers that have to line up against our uh, secondary because it is nasty. Yeah, I mean, with, without a doubt, I mean, what, what Trayvon Diggs is going to bring to the table, and I think that the addition of, of Gilmore, it, it's, it's very similar to, to Cooks. I think he's going to help CD on the other side. You got your, your, your core players here on, on the cornerback and receiver. And that's what I think they're trying to do is kind of add to them that can help them even even take it to the next step. So, you know, if you don't want to throw it at Gilmore, you're going to have to throw it at Diggs. And we saw that last year. Diggs did not get he didn't interception numbers went down because a lot of times they didn't throw his way. But let's see what happens when Gilmore's sitting on the other side. Now, you talk about one of the better players on defense with with Zach Mart or excuse me, with Trayvon Diggs, but Zach Martin on offense is he's not on the practice field. He's not having that mentorship as we're talking about maybe stuff on Gilmore more impacting on Trayvon Diggs. Nick, how big of an impact is it to not have Zach Martin in the fold and uh, how can he maybe get this figured out? Yeah, it's, it's a tough one when you're talking about offensive line and continuity. He's one of your, your older players. He's one of your better players. So not being out here all the time and not exposing yourself to getting hurt, it's not the worst thing in the world. However, they do need to build the continuity. And, and, and so I think he will, it will be resolved it's going to be resolved for the fans. The fans are going to see number 70 at right guard. Is it going to be resolved for him contract-wise? That remains to be seen. I think it's so interesting, too, when you think about how they're trying to piece together this offensive line at camp. There's a lot of guys who are coming back from injury trying to get that position uh, settled in. And, and the continuity, as Nick just spoke about, I think is so important with the offensive line. And I go back to my point about Dak Prescott. He's got to feel comfortable with a wall in front of him. And when you're missing a major piece of that wall, it's difficult. Um, so I think, too, that comfortability for your quarterback, the comfortability for the rest of the offensive line is going to be huge. But on the flip side of that, it's exciting in the way that some of these younger guys are maybe getting some exposure. So it's definitely a tricky situation. And it, it does bring an impact across the line of scrimmage because it, Terrence Steele, you think about him coming back from injury, might want to have those reps with, with Zach Martin. And then you even have a Josh Ball jumping in there and he's finally getting the opportunity to jump in and get some play at guard. Maybe that's something that will impact him in a positive way. But either way, somebody's going to have to step up without Zach Martin in the fold and not seeing number 70 on the field for the Cowboys. When we come back, Nick Eatman talks more with Stephen Jones about the Zach Martin situation and some of the other moves that could be on the horizon for this front office. This segment was brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. This segment is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Welcome back to Oxnard, California, back here with Special Edition. Haley Sutton, Nick Eatman, I'm Kyle Yeomans. And Nick, it's been an exciting week for the Cowboys to get back on the practice field, but also to start building that roster toward the 2023 season. You got a chance to catch up with Stephen Jones about some of that roster acquisitions. Yeah, definitely. And, and the thing with, with Stephen, he's excited about starting camp, of course, but you want your best players. Zach Martin obviously is one of their best players, did not start camp here. I got a chance to talk to him about that, but also it creates some opportunities for others. Well, first of all, the business is the tough part of our business. Uh, uh, obviously, it, it, it's the foundation in terms of, uh, you know, certainly uh, we've got a great labor agreement, and uh, but when you get into the details of the business, most teams, if you look around the, 
league uh, have forms of business going on in terms of uh, their training camps. Uh, as we all know, we have nothing but the greatest respect uh, for Zach Martin, what he stands for. He's always done things the right way. Uh, he's been a great soldier, a great teammate. Uh, this is just the tough part of the business. At the same time, as you said, uh, you know, where he plays is an area where we do need, uh, you know, to develop some young guys. And uh, certainly Zach's been in a lot of training camps, probably doesn't, uh, doesn't need the work uh, as much as most. Uh, uh, that goes without saying, but it will be great to see some young guys get some repetitions out there. Uh, certainly uh, hope uh, to improve to a level if you do have uh, you know, injuries along the way during the season that, uh, you know, they'll put themselves in even a better position to be more productive uh, if we have to count on one of these interior guys. You said we get to training camp, you, you hope to get one or two done, uh, those contracts. Uh, you guys aren't, aren't finished yet. I would imagine still working on some of these others. Well, that that, that never stops, uh, especially if you're doing, a, uh, doing your job right in terms of drafting uh, great young players. Um, we certainly got guys like... Uh, a, a C.D. Lamb, uh, obviously a Micah Parsons starting to raise his head. He came in with uh, Diggs yesterday to sign his contract and had a little fun with Micah. I said, don't be expecting this kind of money, Micah, and he laughed. And uh, uh, we all know where that's probably going. But, uh, you know, that's what happens when you draft well. Uh, what's a position that, that you are excited about, eager to look at once, once the you know we, we really get going here and when the pads come on? Well, I think certainly seeing Mozzie develop uh, in the uh, interior of our defensive line. We got Hankins there. Uh, I know Dan's fired up about a big package. Uh, you know, what we do well is uh, certainly uh, rush the passer and turn the ball over. We can certainly improve in the running game. That's why we drafted Mozzie. Uh, if we can get them into those second and third and longs, uh, then that should play into our hands in terms of uh, what we do well as a defense. So. Certainly excited to see how, how that comes along. Uh, you know, question marks, obviously, we've got to uh, find a kicker that we can count on, uh, you know, when the time comes. So it'll be interesting to watch the, the kicking competition. Uh, you know, certainly seeing how guys like uh, a Gilmore and a Cooks fit in with this football team. We have, obviously, uh, you know, we gave up resources and money to have those guys on our team when we traded for them. And I uh, really think they can be a, a big difference makers in terms of making us a better football team. And that entire interview presented by Texas Lotto or Stephen Jones, you can see that on DallasCowboys.com. And, and Kyle, he really, you can tell his excitement for this team. And, and, and he understands it is a business, but yet he wants to get it. everybody here. Yeah, there's a lot on the table for the front office. Every time training camp rolls around, and, and there's a lot of decisions to be made as well, just like they did to get to this point. They've got to continue forward to the 2023 season. And as we continue forward here on Special Edition, when we come back, Haley Sutton goes inside. Florida A&M and one of the top programs you've never heard of. We're going to talk about that when we come back. This segment was brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Welcome back to Special Edition, where, of course, we get ready for the Cowboys again to take the practice field behind us for training camp 2023. And Haley, a couple of guys behind us, of course, went to, to Alabama. They went to the LSUs of the world, but they're not always from those SEC, Big Ten, Big 12 schools that you see in college football every Saturday. They can come from just about anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I had the awesome opportunity of catching up with Isaiah Land early in the offseason, a guy who the Cowboys are pretty high on. And the story that they found him, Dan Quinn actually was recruiting somebody else, and they discovered Isaiah Land. And that got me thinking, well, who is this Isaiah Land kid, and where does he come from? He's a graduate of FAMU, and the Cowboys actually have a long history of drafting from FAMU. It's a blessing to be here, to be a part of like an NFL organization it just feel like a blessing like, it was bittersweet because I, I you know I, I, was, I wanted to get drafted but I feel like God does everything for a reason I want to be an inside linebacker and I want to be a pass rusher and like my favorite player Michael Parsons plays here I, I, I like literally the past two three years I watch him every day while I'm eating breakfast you know the, the dude who I'm out of my game after I get to watch him in practice I got my teammate Bell here I feel like it's the perfect fit for me I've had my eye on Zay for for quite some time I first saw him looking at Bell from a year ago, 
and uh, he had a fantastic junior year. They did. He had you know over 20 sacks and really lit it up. I can. Who's this guy? <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, uh, anytime you recruit a uh, prospective student athlete, the number one thing they want to hear is uh, how can you get them prepared to play football at the highest level, which is obviously the National Football League. And so, you know, for us to throughout our history have over four. Uh, individuals, you know, be able to suit up with America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, it's very exciting. They were the only team to give me a chance. So I feel the same way with the Cowboys. Like, they was the first team, you know, to really show me, like, you know, they believe in me and stuff like that. So I'm going to make it my job to, you know, not make them regret that. I'm um, tell you what, man, those were the best years of my life. Florida A&M did not recruit me like, up front. Coach Hubbard came down and didn't even have to really recruit. I just told him I was coming. <laughs> Yeah. It's a lifestyle. That's all I can tell you. It, we do it different. We, we, well, for what we lack in glitz and glitter and material and money, we made up with heart and soul. You know, some of those things that, you know, maybe some of the, the, the high resource institutions don't have to worry about, you know, our students over the years have had to overcome a lot of those adversities. And it's built character. I remember growing up, like, there'd be a, a, a hundred of us, a thousand of us saying, you know, we going, I'm going to the NFL when I get older. And then when I get to high school, it's probably 500. Then you get to college, and it's like 100 people. And then senior year, it's probably about 15 of us who still got that dream. It's, and, and about out of the 15, it's probably about five that really put the work in to really do it. You got to understand, Ed Tutal Jones come from Tennessee State. Uh, the great Bob Hayes, world fast man, he came from Florida a &M. There are players that are there. I remember calling Marquise from the combine. Hey, they ran well, he did good. And so he's a dog. And so from that time, I've always had my vision on him, the size, the length. Could this defensive end play linebacker? Could he go down? I know he can rush. So I was just trying to add, he's a, he, one of the examples of what else can they do. Probably since 2019, uh, we've had players, you know, who've gotten attention from the NFL scouts. They're not there by, by coincidence or by chance. They're, you know, playing for the Dallas Cowboys because of their hard work. It's like, we, we, we can keep the line of like, fam, you greats going to the Cowboys yo, man, yo, a thing. Yo, man, what's up, baby? What's up? How what's you up? doing, man? Boy, well, you looking good, man. Congratulations, man. Yes, I already talked to the coaches. They loving you. Marquise Bell already done set the bar high. Mm -hmm. Study you, doing what he had to do, made the team. That's what I'm expecting from you. And for you to be here, man, see you guys come to Florida and them, you and Marquise Bell, I'm so proud of y'all, yes, man. God bless you. Strike. Strike. Strike again. The Rattlers, baby, we strike. And you know what? Don't catch us when we're going to have a week off because we're full of venom. So one hit, you dead, baby. <laughs> Guys, it's hard not to get excited when you've got Nate Newton at the end of the piece getting all fired up and he'll actually be here here on special edition with us uh, in just a few days. But it's really cool to see some of these younger guys playing with a chip on their shoulder. You hear that phrase all the time, but from kids who come from HBCUs like Isaiah Land, they really do have something to prove. So I'm so excited for him to get some reps at practice. And I love the way you just transitioned into our final block here <laughs> on Special Edition because something to prove is certainly on the table for Donovan Wilson, but he may not have as much time to prove that going into, of course, the first year of a brand new deal. Donovan Wilson will talk about his injury and give you some updates when we come back with more Special Edition. Special Edition, presented by AT&T, was brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to the final segment of Special Edition in Oxnard, California, as we wrap things up with Haley Sutton, Nick Eatman. I'm Kyle Yeomans, Donovan Wilson, and practice number one unfortunately goes down and it looks like a lower body injury. He's slated to miss some time. And Nick, I mean, who does that impact the most in that safety room? Well, they, they had some depth here going in, which is a good thing, you know, at training camp, especially because you know injuries pop up. Uh, Israel Mukwamu, who also had uh, a little bit of a setback earlier in, in camp, um, should be able to kind of take some of those reps. And so I, I think that, that that's one guy that could help. Did you hear Nate Newton say strike, strike, <laughs> strike again? I'm looking at you, Marquise Bell. This is a great opportunity for him to really get some playing time and get in the rotation. Bell stepped up, stepped up, stepped in whenever Donovan Wilson went down. And so 
course, you might see him in the fold as well. Be sure to keep up with everything special edition and on DallasCowboys.com by downloading the Cowboys Now app. For Haley, for Nick, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long here on Special Edition.